Hi, I'm Traveling Jim. I go from place to place looking for interesting things to show you. This show, we will be traveling to Dover, Ohio for the Dover Steam Show. Rick Logan, the track announcer, will be our guest host. He will be giving us a guided tour of the showgrounds. Special guest host is James Boblins, who is the curator of the Huber Machinery Museum. He will be giving us a tour of the Huber Museum display at the show. So steam's up. Hope you like the show. Here in the, the antique tractor area, uh, and here you'll find just a little bit of everything, no matter what color of tractor that you're, you like, or your father liked, or your grandfather liked, you're, you'll more than likely find it here. There's everything from the common, the Olivers, the John Deere's, and the Fords, and internationals to some oddballs. Um, I call an oddball any company that was only around for two or three years, but they made several tractors, and you'll, you'll find some of them here. Behind me here is a, they call it a power eater. It's basically an electric motor that when you spin it with a steam engine or a gas tractor, and they wire it up, it turns into a generator, and it draws energy. They dissipate the energy, there's coils in the back with fans on them, they get rid of the, the electricity through, and what it does, it puts a load on a steam engine or a gas tractor so that people can see them when they're working. Because a, a steam engine just sitting there puffing a little bit of smoke isn't real impressive, but when you have one working under load and you can hear them running, it, it makes a lot better show for them. And off to my right here, we have the Baker fans. The Baker fan was, was designed by the Baker company as a way to test their steam engines before, they would be, before they'd leave the factory. Uh, they would hook them up to a fan and run them for a certain amount of time to test how much water and how much fuel they would use in a certain amount of time to see if the engine was up, up to uh, their grade that everything was working right on it. To my right right here is a shingle mill. Uh, when you build a house, before they come out with a shingle mill, you had to take blocks of cedar and a hatchet and split them to make your shingles. Well, when they come out with a mill, the mill will actually cut the shingles for you. The, the mechanism in there turns the block one way and the other as it cuts it, so you get your nice, perfectly shaped shingles out of it. Right here to my right is a Uber thrashing machine. It was one of the, the, one of the products of the, the Uber company out of Marion, Ohio that built the steam engines that are part of our feature here. Uh, that, was a, that was a big part of the Uber company. That was actually, they built thrashing machines before they built steam engines. We have a baler made by the John Deere Company on Moline, Illinois. It's, this is a hand-fed baler. And what that means is the new balers of today will go along and pick the hay right up off the ground. These ones, you had to bring all of it into one spot, and then with a pitchfork, you would feed it into the top, right back to where that yellow board is on top right there. And so it took a lot more work. It took more people to feed it. And the bales were all hand-tied when they come out you had to run wires around them and actually twist them by hand in order to tie the bales where today's are all done automatically. They have, they use uh, baling twine and have automatic knotters to tie it inside the machine.
Okay, here behind me is our sawmill. This particular mill here is an enterprise mill. It was built here in Ohio. and It's, it's a mill that would have been taking out into the woods. Uh, they had taken it out, set it right up where they were cutting trees and taken either a steam engine like we're using or a gas tractor and run the mill right there and cut, you know, they'd cut the trees down, they'd drop them, they'd bring them right straight to the mill, cut them up into lumber and then haul the lumber away because that way they could just leave the waste lay out in the woods, they wouldn't have to worry about cleaning it up afterwards. And it was a lot more convenient because there was no good transportation systems at that time. So cutting the wood right there, if they were building a house, more than likely the lumber was cut within a mile where the house was built. gas engine area, they, they call it the hit and miss area because most of these engines are hit and miss governed. But as you can see, there's a little bit of everything behind me, all kinds of different engines, all the parts and pieces that went with them, and a little bit of everything else. This is one of them areas that you got to come and experience for yourself and look around because there's so much there, I don't think anybody could tell you everything. This is our stationary and model steam area where they bring in stationary engines that were used in plants. Uh, in factories and all kinds of different things. Uh, they, they would use a steam engine in everything from a uh, clothing store to run uh, their presses and all that, all the way up through a factory that uh, steam engines that ran a whole factory. We don't have anything here quite that large, but we have some that would run you know, a good, a good sized portion of a factory. Hi, I'm John Proventure from Litchfield, Ohio, and we have here a 1924 or and Sembauer portable steam engine rated at 15 horsepower. Uh, it was built in uh, Reading, Pennsylvania. Uh, it spent most of its life grinding feed in the uh, Greenville, Pennsylvania area. Uh, then uh, spent some time in the Portersville Club in Pennsylvania for about the last 35 years or so. Uh, we bring it here to Dover, Ohio to the uh, engine show, to provide steam for the stationary engine display. And uh, that's pretty much what we do with it here at this show.